The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here on this uh, Wednesday, the 11th of January. We're looking at the Dow up 107 at 33,811. Now, this is going to be very important. I think over the next, I, I would even say through, through Monday, I think we're going to get just a tremendous amount of information about what's going on. And let me go through this one at a time. First of all, the Dow is up 92. Yes, it broke from that rectangle formation and it's been closing above the re rectangle 35,400 resistance. That's really important. I haven't yet, uh, I, I need to do that, just upgrade that plus into an uh, up arrow because there's a good chance now with the stochastic at 75%, the MACD crossing positive, that we can call it a buy mode expecting a leg D. But look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart is suggesting that we, we're going to be in a containment area for a little while longer on the weekly chart because it's going to take some time to get back to the 34,712 um, high that was made. It should on the 13th of December. And just a stair-step move where in a shorter time frame it goes to peak A, B, C, D, and then tries to get to just under, right on, or just above in the rectangle formation, the height. As long as it holds key support in the weekly chart, that'll be 33,300. Now let's make it 33,000. Yep, 33,300s. And you can see how the weekly chart is starting to improve for the monthly chart. For the first time, and this is only the beginning of the month, and it's a monthly bar. So I can't talk about it as if it's closed, but I'm really impressed that for the first time in a long time, you've got green, meaning the nine period moving averages is moving over the 14. That means this whole area right here is a containment area. And even with the fear of what's going to happen tomorrow with the CPI, if the numbers come out <clears throat> much higher than expected, the Dow is just constantly trying to move higher over the last couple of days. Every single a slide is met with buying. I'm really impressed. And that kind of confirms what I was looking at in the daily chart and reason why we keep adding to our long positions in the Dow, especially the SOXS, oh, sorry, the UDOW, which is the 300% um, three, uh, long position. We treated, we've got a core position, but we also treat it as a trading uh, mode and we get raise stops as soon as we get a profit and we just come out of it and we keep doing that because we're trying to build a, a little kitty for any time that you're wrong you want to have a kitty to be able to support that so that's that's the doubt but look at the S&P the S&P um, also in a leg C uh, sorry peak C trying to get to a leg D that the weekly chart of the Dow was way above the 40 uh, the nine period moving average let me just go through this again. So we're talking apples to apples here. Look, here's the Dow. Look how the green nine period moving average is so far above the 14. But look at the S&P, the struggle uh, to get positive is very close to going positive, but it hasn't yet. And you've got this Chapman Wave inside track. You know, I'm going to get rid of these Fibonacci. I always find Fibonacci numbers are just great when they work. With. Otherwise, it's just, it makes it very messy for me. I'm even going to get rid of this because I don't want any mess here. It doesn't look like it's clean, but I like a, a clear chart. There it is. So it's really important. We're just on the edge of the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It hasn't been able to close it at all above the green line. This is going to be the test of the next few days for the weekly chart. And the monthly chart doesn't look good. It's still really lagging a lot. Look at the QQQ. Now, this is going to be, I'll, I'll talk about this. I want to talk about this in relationship to questions I had that I'm trying to cover at the same time. So the QQQ, very close to getting to a leg D above 275.29, the high of the 9th of January. And with the high today is 274.93, uh, it's very close. 
And what's really important is if, let me just extend these down because it's very important. They've worked so far. Let's see if they're going to continue to work. This is a channel we've inside tracked two parallel lines, just mini a little mini channel that becomes either a repellent or a propellant. In this case, it's constantly been a repellent. Look at the pink in the weekly chart. The nine is way under the 14, just struggling, struggling. Look at the monthly chart. Ugh, doesn't look very good at all. But if the daily chart starts to move, that's going to be important. Now, let me just put this in relationship to the way I always look at parallels. Um, if you look at CRM, salesforce.com, this is a really nice move from the 124s to 145. It has made a leg D. This could turn out to be a PT. I must just, just dub, double check. 149.20, 149.28. Ah, yeah, so this is leg D still. If there's no new high today, recovery high today, that becomes a peak D. So this is in salesforce.com. So this is really the... the I, I'm not sure if I know enough to say this is the leader in the uh, cloud, but they have been in the leadership position for a long, long time, and they had been. And then at 311.25 um, in November of 2021, starts the peak D plunge, comes all the way down to this to this 124. What was it exactly? 124, 120, sorry, six, 126.34 low of the 22nd, 126.34, let me just type that in here, 126.34. Yeah, so what, and that's in November, uh, sorry, in December, and it has a very good spike to the 149s, and now it's holding. But wait a minute, I'm seeing in other areas, I'm seeing other cloud stocks that are like single digit stocks. Um, yeah, there's one that came up, and that is, that I want you to kind of compare it with here. Uh, VTEX showed up on a screener the other day uh, as a screamer, as, as a screener, as a screamer. Uh, and that's what I use for, for single digit stocks that have the chance to give very good percentage gains very quickly. We don't have this. It showed up um, actually yesterday. Yes, it showed up. Was it intraday? I can't remember. But look at this big move, and look at that move from the three from the three fifteens to four forty eight in what two two and a half weeks. <laughs> and this is VTEX e commerce online stores, so cloud based as well. So I'm saying, within sectors, we're getting a big divergence. Look at IBM, which I said maybe this is the real uh, I information technology cloud enterprise software company because it's been doing so well look at this it goes from 151 uh, in january of 20 uh, 2020 plunges to 86.50 i would call that at least almost cut in half march of 2020 and then starts a stair step move going peak a peak b comes back peak a again peak b pulls back then it goes a b c and finally gets to d where 151.63 was the high. <laughs> I love this. The way markets do this. 151.63 on February of 2020. Wait a minute. Plunges to 86. That's almost a 50%, what, 48% decline. And then rallies back to where? 151.21. It comes to within 50 cents of the previous high. Two years later, almost to the, to, the, to the month, and now it's stalling a little bit, but that's IBM. So I'm saying that within sectors, what you're seeing is divergence even there. I'll be back, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, Dow's at 83. I think we, I don't know if we've made the high for the day, but we're gonna have a rest. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, 
Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. I don't know if any of you are already thinking about the den. What's the den? The den is like a chat room. It's really, I don't know why they say chat room. There's nobody really chats there. We, we, it's, it's market information all the time. For instance, Mr. Bull says, number for the monthly high for IBM, higher than year two, 2020, Basil, for what it's worth, 153.21. Yes, I misread that. It is. So it came within less than two points. So it's about the same thing that I was saying, except it was two points difference. Isn't that amazing that it could do that? And now it's pulling back a little bit. And the next question I had was, uh, let me just see. Uh, so all I'm pointing out here is that there's a huge variance in what you look at and do your homework in terms of what I've been saying for ages now is just like I look at the um, Bondi, uh, what is it, Crudy, Dolly, Goldie, Vixie uh, as icons that, that always had relationships and now you're looking at at least for the last five, six months, they're really not quite the same relationships at all. That's bonds to the, to the market and then uh, crude oil to the dollar and then the dollar to gold and uh, the volatility index it just keeps plunging uh, lower and lower and lower. And the market is moving high, but it's not really soaring like you would expect, but it is, it is a market indication. So I'm saying, do your homework because within each sector, you can get a huge variance. For instance, look, Amazon, I'm gonna come back to IWR. I've never looked at it, thank you, um, eyeballs. Uh, we're looking at um, I. The Amazon, you remember we had, uh, I think it was, it was it George in Boston, we were looking at it and he was starting positions and I said, okay, that's good. But if it's a longer term position, let's make it a wider stop than five points. Um, but it, it held very nicely from the 84 entry that he had. He went to 81.43 on the six. And here it is, 81.43 to 93.47 in leg A. And the MAGD is is really strong. Nine just today crossed positive, and stochastic still lagging at 72%, but it's acting very well. Unbalanced volume is pulling up. So what I'm looking at is within this whole area, um, I, I had a stock that I kept saying, should I put a, a buy for subscribers just as a trade, a screamer, HBI, HBI? Why on earth would HBI doing well? And then I looked, Haynes, what is that? It's Haynes brand. This is shirts, underwear, socks. Look at the screen. And every look, three for four days. 
I could have said, just grab it here and have a tight stop and close your eyes and let it just rip. And here it is in leg D. It made a low just the other day on December the 22nd. It makes a low of 565. And here it is at 784. That's 20. I mean, and that's a two point rally. That's, uh, what is it, 38%, something like that. This is a huge move. And this is a Haynes brand. And yet, if you look at the RTH, which is the, the retail sector itself, it's just been kind of in the doldrums. Um, it's actually holding much better than you would expect with all the bad news out there. But look, it's just kind of stuck. This is a, this is a, this is 20% is Amazon. And XRT is the um, S&P equal weighted. And look at this also. And yet, individually, you're looking at certain sectors. Oh, so a question came up here about, where was it, pins. We have a denner who's been looking at it, entered pins, and now it's up very nicely. It's up at 27.06 above the 200 period exponential moving average. And you see this weekly chart. That is so unusual to have. I've seen it in a smaller time, uh, smaller distance from the low to the high, going to maybe a D, even an F, but this has just continued alphabetically, and that was a G slash C, and yeah, it's in D, and the chart itself, making every other couple of weeks, it just makes a new recovery high, then pulls back, holds the, just goes under the 14 period moving air, then goes back and makes a new recovery high. Pin, pin, Pinterest, a discovery engine for this, uh, recipes, home ideas style, I guess more, I thought it would be, it was during t uh, the um, COVID, going to the 2021 20, high, around about uh, just under 90, and then it plunged. It got down to, what was the last, down to the uh, uh, 15s, and then it ran up again, and here is a 27, but the chart itself very much looks like this. Ulta, Ulta Beauty, look at this. Remember I said this is the strangest monthly chart I've ever seen. It's like usually the magnet is the propellant line, the 14 or the nine period moving at the bottom. You got that here, but you also have this Chapman Wave inside track resistance at the top. And here it is. As we're speaking, it's at an all-time high, 494, up 5.38. Isn't that amazing? So this weekly chart looks a little bit like uh, uh, pins. And that just says, you know what? There's a chance that pins is in a just a very meticulous and steady upward climb. Now, I haven't done enough homework to say this is, you know, this is a buy or anything like that. I think to say it's acted extremely well. I love the the rhythm of moving to the top. But now look, you've got to look at this in terms of what I like to look at here. So let's look at it this way right here. This is the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It's bumping into it right now. There's also this incredible bar symmetry. You know, I love to talk about bar symmetry. So from this, let me do it in a measured move right here. So from this high to that high, look what you get. And yet, the technicals are actually strengthening. So whether it's going to propel itself above is going to be very important. You've got another couple of days to go in terms of the time sequence. But isn't that interesting? So yes, I do like it. I love the way that it's acting almost independent of the market, just making higher highs and higher lows in a very steady move. And uh, so, yes, I, I just wanted to point that out. Uh, another thing is Zip had asked me recently about TPR, and I mentioned this the other day, that I made a terrible, terrible mistake, mistake. I thought that tapestry was like ancestry. I don't know how I got the two confused, but I did. And I said, I love the chart. And not only that, at this particular point, we're coming up over this year, if there's talk of reparations or anything like that, you'll see people just going to these sites intermittently to check out the ancestry. Well, it's not ancestry. It happens to be the exact opposite. It's very selective. It's Coach, Kate Spade, Stuart Weitzman, Women's Wear. And look at this. It looks like Ulta Beauty. I'm not going to mention any correlation there. But look at that. Just moving to new highs, legs, C in the daily chart. Uh, yes, I love, I love it. A 52-week high, looking really good. It looks to me like it wants to tackle over to the, this this quarter, this first quarter. It wants to try to get to the 40, 49.67 high. 
uh, in May of 2021, and that's at a peak B. I wonder if this is a hint to say the S&P, which also went to monthly chart, went to a B. It has a big sh pullback, but it will get eventually to a leg C one way or the other. I don't know. We're just thinking out loud. So TPR is acting really well. Uh, take a look at Lulu, Lemon Lulu. Now, I've only been in the Lemon Lulu store once, and it was completely, it was like, a hotel, was it the W that I went to in New York? I don't know what it was. There was this hotel that you walked in, and it was just black. It's like it was midnight with no lights, just like little candles or something. It was so groovy. <laughs> it was so terrible. Anyway, Lulu, Lemon, I went to a store once, and it was just the same sort of thing. I felt the uh, same as, as, as at that hotel where I was just, I was in the wrong age group. Let's put it that way. Um, I didn't even really look at the clothes. Anyway, yeah, this is, okay, let me just talk about this when I get back, because I have a, a whole theory about gaps and what happens in gaps. And if you see two gaps downside, that's usually a sign to say you've got to be careful. That was a big thing. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Oh, Mike, during the break, I had so many questions that I answered. I'm trying to see now, where was I before this? I was doing Lulu. Yes. So Lulu, Lulu left. So when you see this huge gap, look, it made a high in the 390s uh, back in December, and then it plunges. And yes, uh, three days ago, it was down to the two, uh, two, two, let's call it 290 level. Now it's up $2 at 311.39. But you see this gap right here. Let me just, I'll use the rectangle just to show the gap. That's a huge gap. One gap there. One gap here. Another huge gap, and it's trying to fill the gap. 
So what I I look at when I'm looking at these gaps, now I've got this as, as a C in the weekly chart. Now it's very important for me to go back. It, it, you remember the Chapman wave methodology, although it encompasses, it's the waveform that never sleeps. It means that you also need to go back and correct something that visually uh, might have been right at the time, but looking back, it just says, no, that was an incorrect notation. So that B should be E slash B, that C should have been F slash C, and that co coincides with the top in the weekly chart. Oops, I did the wrong thing right there. The top in the weekly chart and F, but I still put the parallel F slash C to show that it's still active. It hasn't taken out the starting point right here in the 270s. So Lululemon Athletica Sportswear, I just think it's really, there's a problem. There's a serious problem here. I'd be very careful. I'd, I'd, I don't know if I'd be looking at it as a short just yet. I'd see how much it can fill the gap. But if it stalls between three, it's at 311. If it can get to 315, 317, and then pull back to 313, that says, you know what? There's a chance it's going to come back and do a retest of the low that was made three days ago at uh, 289.48. But the whole thing about gaps is at some point, and I have to, you have to give it time. If over the next, I wouldn't even say three weeks, I'm looking at weekly charts. So I want to see, let's just say the end of February. If at the end of February, Lululemon, instead of having tested the 260s, or even if it has tested the 260s, if it's up at the 345 to 355 level, That'll be a really good sign. At any time in 2023, if it starts to fill the gap at 360, that's going to say whatever the bad news was, it's all on the left side. It's repaired that damage and the price is showing the repair and now it is really bullish. It isn't even close to that right now. So the question is, could I look at it? I've looked at it. I do not like what's going on. Yeah, as a, as a quick trade, I think it's in that whole area of very oversold. Uh, stocks that are trying to rebound, uh, but that's all it is. So no, I don't like it. Next one was just XOM. XOM, yes, this is still in a choppy sideways move. I've said before, ExxonMobil uh, gives you a great dividend. It's had a tremendous capital gain increase, and now it's just taking a real well-deserved breather. I'm calling this E slash A. I think it's an E. I think it's just stuck in a range. I don't know if I'd put any new money to it. I'd much rather wait for a better position. Now, I need, talking about positions, I did this this morning, and I, I said to myself, I know that it's wrong, but I want to get in, and I want to at least over a one point or 80 cents. I, I don't mind making a mistake. So there's a stock we wanted, and every day we just missed it. And I didn't raise the, the price. I, I raised it once, and then I said, that's it. And then even yesterday, we missed getting in. I said to buy under 40. It was up in the 42s. It pulled back all the way down to 41. I said to buy. It went to 41.17. So today, and then it rallied at the end of the day. So today, I said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to say buy it under the close yesterday, which is higher than we wanted it. But I know that it's going to come back under 41. But at the same time, I had a split position because I didn't want to just buy one position and and be, have it pulled back. I want to be able, I like it looking out because I think it has the potential to be a dividend stock as well as a potential capital gain. So we've started our position and now it's pulled back. It hasn't pulled back to under the 41 level. It's a 41.15. But I, I know that it's going to, but the fact that we had a split position said, you know what, you, you don't have to get too excited. That's your entry point. And then we'll see if it comes back. Now, if it doesn't go back to the split level, but for whatever reason, maybe there's good news tomorrow and the market just spirals higher and this spirals higher, at least we've got our position. That's the main, main major thing that I'm looking at. And actually, the resistance is in the 43s. So it's not uh, we're very close to that in a sense. So that's the way I want to do it. I just want to explain that sometimes when you change your entry or you change your stop, I, for subscribers, they know I hardly ever change the stop or the buy stop because once you've thought it through, you've thought it through. Don't overthink yourself because that's where you're wrong. In this particular instance, I just knew that I was going to be wrong, but I was prepared to say, you know what, over the 60, 80 cents or whatever it is, 
it's not a big deal because I think there'll be higher prices. So that's the way it is. That's number one. Number one. Other other question I had was, uh, where did they go? Oh, IWM. So uh, we have in the Dan A and that Tiger YouTube, uh, Basil IWO. I utilized your Dow buying strategy with IWO. Loaded up uh, core positions in June. Add on dips. Thoughts on IWO. So IWO. I've never really followed it. This is the ISIS Russell 2000 growth. Growth. Okay, that's, so that's growth. I haven't done the notation. This will be A, peak B, peak C, D. And then it pops just like what we were looking at before in, what was it? Uh, in, oh my goodness. What were we were looking at? Let me just check. i refresh myself. Uh, it was Lulu, I think, yeah. So was it Lulu? Anyway, so what we did is this here reminds me of the, I call it the double camel, camel hump bump in the MACD. It's like an M-shaped formation. It makes a peak D and then it pulls back, holds the left side low, it does, it's holds above it, and then has a big spiral, just like we had that cell signal back in sub October, October of 2007 in the weekly chart of the S&P, there was a sudden spiral off the June, uh, June or July high. And everyone said, no, it can't be. Can't. And it went just to two peaks. And that's exactly what we've got here. So that's EF. Now we're pulling back. And uh, so I, uh, w, I like your strategy. And this has to do with the Russell uh, 2000 growth ETF. So if, let me just do this here. the so IWM. Keep your eye on the left side chart. It's the same. There it is. I forgot. There's your peak F right there. There's your D holes. The nine didn't grow under the 14. So that was still the continuation pattern to the 200 period moving average. And it went to E slash B. And then I put in an F and a down arrow, even though there was a retest. And look at the retest. The retest said, uh oh, not as strong as it was. It could pull back. And there it is. There's your doji candle high. Why am I missing this? Right there. And that doji candle. The retest was just below it, and look, the technicals were already stalling, and it pulled back sharply. So now my target would be if it gets at 101.54, if it can even trade one tick at 183.51, the 184.61 200 period moving average will become a magnet, just as it had been before. Uh, and if it gets repelled from that again, that's going to be something to monitor. So, okay, so you're looking at the IWO. I, I, I like your plan, and you've got the plan. You've got the, you've got the lows, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, interfere at all. I think that uh, you've got the plan, and it's working very nicely. Uh, let's see. Uh, and Peter says, remember my words, SPS popped out. Uh, for 2023 on Monday, January the 9th at, uh, at 11.25 a.m. Woohoo! Okay, we're going to keep that in mind. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So this is to uh, Slim Roger. This is oil, gas, driller, I think deep sea, whatever it is, uh, um, at uh, trading at 56.01, up six cents. Look at this beautiful peak E that was made back in November in the daily chart at 55. No, it was 56.04. Comes tumbling down. Makes a low at 46.83 on the 9th of December. And look at this technique that I used for years and years and years. I, in fact, my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology, it's uh, not many CDs left. The people that actually don't even use CDs anymore. Um, that had this whole thing about the left side, right side price time match, which is bar symmetry. And look at this, the plumb line right here from that high to this low. Look at that. That exact plumb line took you to the exact day of the retest of the high that was on the 9th going to 50, 56.28, fractionally higher. Pulls back and now it's in leg E. And it looks to me with the stochastic flat at 91%, the on-balance volume's a little overbought. MACD's good, nine's way over the 14th. That it could have a little bit, maybe even fall the gap somewhat over the next few days. But it's a leg D in the weekly chart. I've got it as an alternate account, G slash B in the monthly chart, more like, a, more like a B, the way it's acting. So when I look at the energy, I can't put this together with crude oil because crude oil is down at the lows of the range, and but holding steady at 76. However, if you look at uranium, this is the uranium ETF, miners. Look at that. Pops up to a leg D today and gives it back. But look at that move. And that's just saying that on a shorter term basis, it's the same as I was looking at that whole retail sector. Some in retail are just tanking and other stocks in retail are rallying. We saw that with the cloud situation. Uh, CRM, Salesforce got creamed. And... Um, and then you get this little, uh, whatever it is, what was it that I was looking at uh, a moment ago, uh, so Vitex is acting so well. So you've got that all over the show. You've got, the, you've got to be market specific, stock specific, and that's really the issue here. So I just wanted to show you, uranium is doing quite nicely. The other thing that was, I was asked about is, can I, where did it go? No, it's not there. It was over here. Uh... Oh, that's right. The question came in, how does this all relate to Home Depot and the builders? Well, look, Home Depot had a high of 420, has a low double, perfect double bottom low within a point, 264.51 June, the week of June the 21st, 2022. 
September, three months later, it pops off. They're running all the way to 330. It comes back to 265.61. I mean, 10 cents higher uh, in September, the week of the 29th. And then it has this beautiful double bottom that makes the dreaded H pattern in the Chapman Wave methodology a beautiful cup formation. And it rallies to a peak D at about 348, was it? 347.27. Uh, five weeks ago, then it pulls back to the 40 period moving average and is trying to rally. Well, Home Depot is saying that things are not great, but they're not anywhere as bad as you would read. And if you look at the, uh, where did it go? It goes, yeah, HGX. I spoke about this. I showed subscribers to my opening call. I said, look at the way that the home builders have held so well. This is remarkable when you think of all the bad news, the interest rates and everything. And here we are, peak D, uh, back on December, The this is the HGX, Philadelphia Housing Sector Index. And look at this, the high that was made on the 13th of December at 431.42, being tested day at what? 430.16. I, I don't know how you can even explain it other than to say, magnets, the bottoms and tops become magnets at certain points. And here we are. I don't know if it's in a double top because of the news coming tomorrow. But isn't that impressive? And the weekly chart, look at this beautiful W formation, another left side, right side price time match. And look at the weekly monthly chart. Not great, but holding okay. Very close actually having the nine period cross positive. I can't believe it with all the bad news out there. You would expect that this index would be closer to the 360, 340 level rather than 430. After all, this is home building. Uh, let's look at Toll Brothers. Toll Brothers. Yeah, it just spiked up to a brand new uh, recovery high. A multi, it's a, a yearly high actually. They D in the weekly chart at 55. Len, let's look at Lenar. Another one of these. Yep, there's your leg D. Pops up. Leg E in the weekly chart. So you, I'm, in other words, if I had said to you, if such and such is happening, what do you, what would you expect? Remember, I've often done this. I say to, to uh, sometimes to subscribers or out here, if for my show, the target technicians hour, I say, if you're just looking at the technicals right here, and this particular stock was trading at, uh, at when down at the lows over there at 30. Where would you expect it? Yeah, you'd say, gosh, that's a huge move. Should we, should be trading at 60. Well, actually what it was doing here was in the uh, 70s and now it's at the 90s. So the proportion of the move to the upside has been commensurate with the activity you've seen in the technicals improving, especially the weekly chart. So all I can say is, you shake your head. And I, I have theories. I don't want to do it today. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. And I've spoken about it before that this whole rotation aspect of the market might be happening in the yields, that we might be looking at something where on every big move to the upside, we get a sudden smash to the downside, but it makes higher lows. And you're using up a lot of time as everyone thinks that if the rates are going to skyrocket, the market should just tank. But what it's done is it's just it's rotating through the different sectors at each point, and therefore you're using time uh, rather than price. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe I've got it fixed in my mind, and I'm not articulating it uh, correctly. Let's see, uh, tax, uh, con yeah, construction. So FLR, that's Fleur, I think, if I remember correctly. I followed it for decades. FLR, except I think it changed its name, a uh, symbol. Uh, FLR, yeah, Fleur Corporation. Look at this monthly chart. Peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. Boom. Peak A, peak B, leg C at this particular point. Uh, so that's what I've been saying, that in terms of construction, you've had a really good rally. Yes, in many cases, way underneath the previous highs, but that's what I'm talking about, rotation, that maybe we're using up time rather than price. That's the only way you can excuse it. Uh, Tommy had a great show this morning, and he was also talking to Kevin Hinks, and they were talking about something similar. I'm saying, but if you use time and rotation as the way to ameliorate what normally would be a really big negative, or on the upside, a positive, um, maybe that's going to be the result, that we get to a point where all of a sudden everything comes together, and it's really negative, and before you know it, 
there is a big two to three thousand point decline in the Dow, but it comes from a higher level yet again. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so the other thing I was asked about was I wrote it down, I think it was yesterday. Yes, I, the reason why I keep mentioning some of these stocks in my newsletter is look at W, look at Wayfair, look at this resistance level inside track propeller, uh, repellent zone, and even today it went above it and it pulls back. But it's trying to come off the low, and this is Wayfair, uh, Wayfair Inc., and they have furniture, they kind of home products. Uh, this is a pretty nice move off the low. But are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, I was saying that I thought that we were making some kind of a top earlier on, uh, around about 10, 1030. Uh, you've got yourself a PVD in the 10 minute chart of the E mini. I, I, I just don't see any further big rallies now. I think it's going to be more just a sideways move, chop, chop, chop. And some of the big gainers of yesterday are giving some of the some of the the prices back. Uh, you can understand that. So we're kind of on hold until the news tomorrow. But <coughs> excuse me. Remember, one news event cannot change a direction. So so far the direction is choppy to up. How does that change? And that's going to be a big thing. We'll talk about that tomorrow. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, what I think is happening is that we start to see this rotation. As I showed you, W Wayfair all of a sudden holding quite nicely, doing a little bit better as the market's pulling back. And that's what we want to see. We want to see the SMHs. This, oops, wrong chart. Let's go here, SMHs, semiconductors, right here. And you're going to be handed over to Steve Roach. It'll be a great show again with Steve. 
and all the programming here at TFN check out my opening call daily newsletter. Yep, the SMHs are down a point at 270.85, but look how it's, they're trying to come off the lows, and that's going to be important. How does this 200 period moving age of 220 become either a repellent and push the price away, or does it pop above it? So we, there's a number of things that we're watching. As I said, this week is going to be really important to give us elucidation as to what's going to happen into the first, the end of January, going to the first weeks of February. It's going to be really important, uh, important. And we're looking at some kind of rotation going on here. And certainly in the energy sector, it's very selective, but some things are working in the energy sector very well. And some areas are like Exxon, CVX, are just taking a little bit of a breather here. So with that, I'm going to say, hand you over to great program over here at TFNN for the rest of the day. Um, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Check out my opening call. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks.